passage to the light. Open window, a challenge for your mind. If we only try, looking at our world through another perspective, learning how our lives are connected. for us to see open window how different things could be open window a passage to the light open window a challenge for your mind Hi, this is Open Window and welcome to our show. Listen, I like to surround myself with positive people and today is no exception. We've got a special guest coming up and don't you go away. I'll introduce him in just a few moments. But right now I'd like to take the time and the opportunity to say thank you so much for watching Open Window and thanks to you who have stopped me in the stores and the banks and said, I watch your show. I appreciate that, but you know, I can't remember everybody's name, but listen, I want you to continue to watch us and write us and let us know what you want to hear and to see on Open Window. But let me, let me get to my guest today. I tell you, author, public speaker, I mean, you name it, you do it. I tell you, thank you, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, for coming on the Open Window today. Hey, Welcome to our show. My pleasure. I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited because, you know, at 6 o'clock this morning, I was talking about you. Okay. <laughs> I was talking about you because you were a speaker about six years ago at one of the functions that I'm a part of, my, this uh, organization that I'm a part of, and everybody talked about you after the banquet, how wonderful you were, how motivating you were, and I get a chance to meet you, and I'm just so excited. I tell you, I am. That was the National Council of Negro Women. That was the National Council of Negro Women. But you know, Vicki, when people say, well, they get excited about what I say and what I'm doing, the focus really isn't on me. It's on all the individuals that I had an opportunity to meet and to interview and probably ask them, you know, what made the difference in your life? And uh, I like to think of myself as an individual, if there's a success or achievement or accomplishment anywhere within the African-American community, I want to be there to categorize it and make sure I get it out to the masses. Well, listen, I thank you for allowing God to channel that, all of that, those experiences through you. Sure. It's wonderful. Let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, I'm an open book. Uh, many people understand and they, they know what I did when I got my fancy PhD degree from Northwestern University. I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I certainly knew what I didn't want to do and I use that as a springboard in my life. I really wanted to find out, you know, you know why some, pre well, excuse me, why some people succeed while others fail, mm -hmm. you know, why is one individual rich and wealthy while another is impoverished and that was sort of in the back of my mind when I graduated. Now, granted, I worked in corporate America for about 10 years until I finished my first book. And I, I carved out a list initially of about 50 African Americans that I wanted to interview, probably to ask those two questions. Well, that list grew from 50 to 100, from 100 to 150, and I, I quit counting at 150 interviews. Mm. You probably come up with a list of individuals, and I probably interviewed them. But all I'm trying to do is get the message out there and what these individuals told me. As you say, you're, this is an open window. I try to be a window for these individuals. I love it. No matter who I interviewed, Vicki, I found four common chords in all these men and women. Number one, they dream big dreams. Mm. They had a dream, a passion, something they desperately wanted to accomplish in life. Number two, they were interdirected versus out of directed. In other words, they weren't so quick to believe well-meaning friends and family members who said, you can't do this, you can't mm -hmm. do that. They walked to a beat of a different drummer. And that's why the old poet Robert Frost is so apropos when he wrote years ago, two roads diverged in the wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. In other words, what he was trying to say is that you are unique. As an individual, you are unique. Mm. You know, you cannot succeed taking the road that everybody else took. You must take that lonely road. Point number three, these individuals dedicated themselves to lifelong learning. 
And that's so critical in this day and age, in the new millennium, mm -hmm. that we seek the information. Granted, no matter what subject you want to study, or no matter what you want to do in life, chances are it's probably already been studied and, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. up to us to get that information. So you got to become a sponge for that information. Seek out the individuals, read the books, listen to the tapes. What I found out in these individuals, they dedicated themselves to lifelong learning. In other words, you don't go to school one period of your life. You're in school every day of oh, your life. Right. Life yeah. is lesson. Yeah. So you confront life as if you're about to have a major exam. Mm. And then last but not least, point number four, these men and women flat out refuse to fail. Mm. Now, I'm not saying they didn't mm. fail. Mm. Many of them actually failed their way to success, so failure was never a viable option for them. Several months ago, I'm flying from New York, excuse me, from my Atlanta home to California. And this was right after the Masters. So I take my seat in first class, and who am I sitting next to? Earl Woods, Tiger Woods' oh, father. Okay. So we're flying across the country, and I said to him, I said, was Tiger upset that he didn't win the Masters? And he said, no. He was probably relieved. I said, what do you mean relieved? He said, well, he was exhausted. Tiger has a grueling practice schedule. I said, well, what is his practice schedule? He told me he hits a minimum of 1,000 golf balls a day. Ooh. I said, how long does it mm. take him to do that? Mm. He says, between five and six hours. Mm. Now, anybody, I mean, you walk up and down Peachtree Street or wherever you are, anybody can hit 1,000 golf balls a day. It's a question of will you do it. Right. You see, success is right. never a question of can you do it. It's always a question of will you do it. Will you do it. I love it. I love that. And and your first book that you wrote that, that you... Think uh, and Grow Rich, a black choice. Think, yeah, I like that too. Here it is right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that, uh, but we're going to have to take a break right now. We'll be back with more of Open Window. And don't you go away. Stay tuned. This is Vicki White, host of Open Window. We are interested in creating programming based upon local organizations and services. Please accept this invitation to call us or email us with your interests, ideas, and concerns. Let's review them. Hi, I'm a person that likes to stay on top of events in my community. That's why each week I watch Open Window. It's a community-based program that also is an excellent awareness forum. Watch Open Window every week at these times. In America, you are not required to offer food to the hungry or shelter to the homeless. There is no ordinance forcing you to visit the lonely. In fact, nowhere in the Constitution does it say you have to provide anything for anybody. Thank you for all you've given. Imagine what more could do. Guys disappear when a baby shows up. Be a man. Be responsible. Question. What do you call a guy who makes a baby, then flies the coop? Welcome back to Open Window. Today's guest is Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Dr. Kimbrough, let's go back to something that you said. It's not can you do it, but will you do it? I was talking to you prior to our beginning uh, conversation here on Open Window in reference to I'm motivated by the seasoned citizens in my neighborhood because I walk at 6 o'clock in the morning. And when I see them going around uh, of the area, because I only walk um, uh, uh, maybe a three, I, I've gotten up to three miles now, okay? <laughs> but when I see them just enduring, and I said, I got to do more than this. I got to keep pushing. And it wasn't a question of could I do it, but would I do it? And I've spent some time doing that. So I've gotten up to three and a half miles now, and I'm, I feel real good about that. But not only with just that and, and, and my perception of, of, of doing exercise because I'm at an age right now, I need to do a little bit more than going to work, coming home, sitting down, watching TV, and eating. I need to be up exercising this body because I can't do what I used to do. And I realize that. But it's about will you do it and i like that we're only on this planet for two reasons vicky number one spiritual growth and number two to find our life's purpose and when you find your life's purpose you know it's it's a, incumbent upon you to take action mm -hmm. you know there's no secret to motivation there's only two keys to motivation number one you decide 
You know, hey, I'm going to lose weight. I'm mm -hmm. going to start writing mm -hmm. a book. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to start exercising more. I'm going to be the parent that I should be. You make a decision. Then after you make the decision, Vicki, you never let an exception occur. Mm. So if you say, well, I want to go on a diet, all right? I'm starting today. Here we are. I'm going on a diet. And then you go out to lunch with some of your personal friends. You know, after you have your appetizers, after you have your entree, here they come with the dessert cart. Excuse me, the dessert cart. No, I made the decision that I'm going on a diet. You never let an exception mm. occur. And again, that's what I found out in the interviews that I had. Going back to finding your life's purpose, you must ask yourself four critical questions. And hopefully, when you answer these four questions, they will motivate you to action. Again, in all the interviews that I had, it all goes back to these four questions. Number one, what do I love to do? What do I have a passion for? Mm. What can I throw my whole heart and soul into? Question number two, what would I do for free? If no one ever paid me a dime, if no one ever gave me a financial reward for my efforts, what would I do for free? Mm. Because when you're doing what you love to do and you would do it for, for free, free, your work is your play. Right. And if your work is your play, you'll mm. never work a day in your life. Question number three, Vicki, what comes easy to me but difficult to somebody else? Mm. As we say in business school, what is my area of unfair competitive advantage? And granted, we all have areas of unfair competitive advantage. I mean, look at me, look at you. I mean, Lord didn't make me seven foot tall. I can't be like Shaquille O'Neal who just won the world championship. I can't dunk a basketball. I can't block a shot. I can't rip down a backboard. But you know what, Vicky? I can write. Mm. And I can teach. That's mm. what I am, a college mm. professor. Mm. You know, and I can communicate effectively. Well, I'd be a fool not to exploit that. Then last question, if you can't answer these three questions openly and honestly, go to those people who you respect. Go to those people who, you know, you respect and admire and ask them, what do you see me as? What do you think I would mm. be good at doing? Mm. When you answer these four questions, you know, I want you to get yourself a bottle of the best champagne because you've already beat the odds. You found the number one reason why you've been put on this planet. And if that doesn't motivate you to action, nothing will. I like that. I like that because we all make decisions here. And, you know, you, when you were talking, I was thinking about something that someone told me maybe about mm, a couple of months ago, and they asked me, no, 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 we were in a conversation, and I said, you know, I really want to do this. And they looked at me and they said, well, you know what? I think you would be best at this. I was shocked with that because usually you get around folk who agree with whatever you say, mm -hmm. but I really took that at heart, and I took it at heart, and I'm making some changes with that because I'm looking to go into something that I really want mm -hmm. to do. And my sons ask me all the time, Mom, why are you always doing that for free? Yeah. But you know, I love doing what I do. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. That's Thank called God. perspective. Just yeah. when you think you know it all and you make the slightest change or modification to it, you get a new take on the situation. Mm. One of the things that I would do in my graduate classes at Clark Atlanta University, I would never allow my students to sit in the same seat twice. Mm. Just when you think that you figured this thing out and then, you know, you move the student or you, you know, go from the first row to the back of the row, you get a aha, an epiphany. That's a part of imagination. You see, Vicki, the average individual in our society gets four ideas a year, any one of which, if they had the guts, the courage, the fortitude to chase their dream would make them financially independent. Mm. Well, why wouldn't they do that? Well, number one is fear. You know, number course, two, number two number is one, poor yeah. self, low self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. This may blow up in my face. My brother-in-law tried that and he lost his shirt. No, where do ideas come from? An idea comes from your creator knocking on right. your subconscious asking you, do you want more out of life? And you gotta listen to that. You know what, I want you to continue to listen now because Dr. Kimbrough is coming back with much, much more. Don't you go away. Thank you for watching us here on Open Window, a program designed to enlighten and embrace the community and the world around us. We here on Open Window would like to take this opportunity to reach out to you, our viewers, for support so that we will continue to bring you delightful and quality programming. You may make your tax-free contributions or donations to the name and address shown on your screen. Open Window Welcome back to Open Window. Today's guest is Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. We're talking a little bit uh, to Dr. Kimbrough about his, one of his, his very first book, right? Mm -hmm. Think and Grow Rich. 
some of the concepts that you brought up and you, we talked about in the first two segments are just profound. One of the things that we uh, ended up talking about is fear. A lot of times we have a lot of fear and we don't get out there and we know what we want to do, but we won't take a, a stand in that. Well, what is fear? Fear is false education appearing real. Mm. What am I trying to say, Vicki? I said, when you chase your dreams, you will be tested. So it's important that you see with your mind's eye mm. because your physical eye many times will lie to you. I mean, here we are in Atlanta, Georgia. If I said, Vicki, let's go to Savannah. And we stand at the, you know, on the shores of Savannah, Georgia, and we look out across the Atlantic Ocean. You might say to me, gee, Dennis, it looks, it looks like the sky and the water meet. Well, the sky and the water never meet. Otherwise, there wouldn't be such thing as gravity. If you and I stood on railroad tracks, you know, that's an example of your physical eye lying to. If you and I stood on railroad tracks and we looked down the train tracks, you would say, it looks like the tracks are coming together. Mm. But the tracks never come together, mm -hmm. otherwise the train would fall off the tracks. Mm -hmm. Those are two examples of your physical eye lying to you. So when you get a dream, when you get a vision, when you get the one thing that you say, I will do, I will follow this thing through. And again, dreams and visions coming to you through your creator, Hey, when you jump out there and something goes wrong, you get your hand spanked, you lose a car, they cut your gas, lights, and water electricity off, no, don't fear, don't quit, keep going. It's just making you better for all of it. You ask any orthopedic surgeon, and they will tell you that a broken bone, once healed properly, is stronger than the original bone. Mm. You will be stronger for the effort. You'll be stronger for the test. That's a part of overcoming. All the people that I interviewed had a great overcoming in their life, including myself. Fantastic. I'm thinking too as you're talking there, claiming those things that are not as though they were, I like that. Exactly. Because we won't see it. And as long as we have that fear, we'll never uh, accomplish what we need. And what faith we want. is not faith yeah. until you act, act upon it. Act upon it, right. It's action. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the interviews that you had here with this particular book, Think and Grow Rich. Well, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing going back to that original list of 50 people that I want to interview. Um, I just came back from my Atlanta home. I interviewed number 20 on that list who happened to be Earl Graves of Black Enterprise Magazine. <laughs> and I came back to my Atlanta home and I saw there was a message on my recorder. So I hit the button and who is it? It's none other than W. Clement Stone who was the president of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And the message, you know, uh, read in, in, in part, he said, um, young man, I heard about you. When can you come to Chicago? I'd like to meet you. Mm -hmm. Well, I returned the phone call the next day and um, W. Clement Stone said,